Welcome to this session on paper one, question two of language, uh, the question on how does the writer use language two. Uh, what we're going to do in this session is have a walkthrough of how we would answer a question like this. So I have uh, an example question here in front of me. I also have my trusty highlighter and my pen, which I'm going to need for this session. And you, you can be doing this along with me. You can be making notes, or you can simply be watching, ready for you to have a go on your own. So paper one, question two, is the question on language, and it's worth eight marks, as we can see here. And because it's worth eight marks, we want to spend about 10 minutes on this question. The general rule is, however many marks it's worth, you round it up uh, to the nearest five or 10, and then we can work out how long to spend. So with only 10 minutes to spend on this, I'm aiming to write two paragraphs, maybe three, if I think I've got enough time. But as always, it's more about the quality than the quantity of what I'm writing. So this question will always say, how does the writer use language here too? And it might be to describe the child, to um, describe a, a setting. Uh, in our case, it's tension and suspense. But really, what we're focusing on here is the language. So we're looking for language devices and why the writers used it. Now, to help us out a lot here, the examiner has given us the section of text. So even though we have an insert, it says here, look in detail at this extract from lines 6 to 16, and here they are. So we don't need to be going back to our insert to be making our notes and highlighting. We can do it straight here on the paper. So thank you for that examiner, very, very helpful. So in terms of what I'm looking for, is I'm looking for three killer quotations. I'm looking for three quotations that aren't too long, but have enough for me to analyze. So essentially, we're looking for language devices. So let's have a read through this source and see what we'd pick out first. So it says, the boy was resting, his arms dangling down, his feet and ankles dipping in and out of the water, with each small swell like a plump, plump seal. His head was turned towards shore, and he noticed that he'd been carried out beyond what his mother would consider safe. Darkness lurked. He could see her lying on a towel, and the man and child playing in the wave wash. He was not afraid, for the water was calm and whispering, and he wasn't really very far from shore, only 40 yards or so. But he wanted to get closer and closer. Otherwise, his mother might sit up, spy him, and order him out of the water. He eased himself back a little bit so he could use his feet to help propel himself. He began to kick and paddle towards shore. His arms displaced water almost silently, but his kicking feet made erratic splashes and left swirls of bubbles in his wake. Okay, so now that we've read through this text, we're now going to look for our quotations. And remember, this is really important that we find judicious quotations, and that means well-judged. We're not looking for something that we can't say much about. We really are looking for those language devices. So in terms of this, and I haven't read this before properly, I haven't answered this before, so I really am doing this live. Um, so the boy was resting, his arms dangling down, feet and ankles dipping in and out of the water. Now, there's really nothing there that I could pick up on. Now, an eager student, overly eager, might look and say, dangling down, alliteration. You think, okay, great. What are you going to say about that? Because if you find something, you've always got to say why. So what? And that's what we're looking for. So there's nothing really there that I could pick out. But there is, at the end of this sentence, dipping in and out of the water with each small swell like a plump seal. Now, straight away... I'm highlighting that because we've already got there a simile. So I'm going to label this because we've got like a plump seal. I'm going to put simile there because I know I can write about that. But I've also got to think about why. So why do we have he's like a plump seal? Now think about this word plump. I think for me it gives the imagery of eight, you know, as being quite tantalizing for this shark if he's a plump seal. It indicates that perhaps this boy um, is going to be tasty to this shark. Now, obviously, I can't write that, but I can put about how he perhaps is victimized um, or he's tempting the shark. So you can see all I'm doing here is writing down keywords. It doesn't have to be too legible, uh, thankfully for me. Um, but here I can just think, okay, well, why have we got this simile? Now, I might also notice here we've got sibilance with the S sound there. Now I want to pick that out as well. 
But remember, I've got to say why it's there. So why do we have this sibilance here? Well, sibilance is often, um, and avoid the, it sounds like a snake trap that a lot of people fall into, but it does give a quiet tone, doesn't it? So it gives a sense of quietness, and obviously there's two sides to this. It can be peaceful, or it can be sinister. You know, the fact that it's quiet and tense. So in terms of my question here about tension, I'd probably bring that in as well. So I've got my first quotation and I've analyzed it. I've got some annotations there. Now, what else could I take here? His head was turned towards the shore. He noticed he'd been carried out beyond what his mother would consider safe. Nothing much there. But there is in the next section here. So I could take this bit here. Darkness lurked. Now, straight away, I know that's a short sentence. So I can be mentioning that so short sentence which obviously builds tension the writer is trying to bring that to our attention but also we've got this word darkness now darkness obviously has connotations of evil so I'm going to put imagery of evil there sinister and lurked as well I might look at that word lurked and think okay well what does that indicate if something's lurking it means perhaps that it's um, it's waiting to jump out at the at the the boy. So perhaps lurking indicates a sinister intent. So sinister intent there with darkness lurks. So I've got two quotations. Now that would be enough for me to start writing. I might find a third either because I might have a chance to write about it, or I might link that third quotation in. So you could see her lying on a towel, the man and child playing in the wave wash who's not afraid for the water was calm and whispering. Now I might take that part. The water was calm and whispering. Now think about our question here. Is that building tension? Well, calmness doesn't, does it? And there's not much I can say about calm, but there is about whispering because obviously water doesn't whisper. So we've got personification there. So I'm just going to label that personification. And again, I've got to think, okay, well, why? Why is the water whispering? It could be to create a calm tone. You think about whispering and it's a sense of quiet, again, linking to the sibilance. But I'm thinking more about the, the dark nature of this. So perhaps, um, yeah, maybe the, the water is warning him. You know, it's like even the water knows what's going to happen and therefore is whispering for him, giving him a clue or a hint as to what's to going to come. I could also perhaps mention we've got there some alliteration with the W sound, but remember, I can't just put that, I need to say why. So why might we have this sound? Well, again, it could emulate the sound of the waves. Uh, it could emphasize this whispering sound. So I could mention that. That might be something I add in there because we've got this kind of soft alliteration. And whenever I find alliteration, I'll always mention if it's harsh or soft, because that can always be something I can explain. So I've got my three killer quotations, I've got my annotations, I'm ready to start writing. Okay, so in terms of how we start our answer, it's always the same. You'll always start with the writer uses. Now, do not please put that. So many students think, well, I have to focus on the question and I'm going to put the writer uses language. Now that's the same as putting the writer uses words because every writer uses languages, language. So we need to be specific. So I'm going back to my quotations and let's say I'm going to start right at the top with this quotation. I'm going to put the writer uses a simile. So I'm going to write the writer uses a simile already going to get a mark for this because I've got my terminology in and I'm only five words in the writer uses a simile with and then I'm going to write out my quotation now don't again fall into the trap of I need to write the full sentence out it's just that little section there the examiner will know this text inside out so don't worry about writing the full thing just the bit you need and for me it's that section so I'm going to write the writer uses a simile with Small, swell, like a plump seal. So there's my quotation. It's embedded in the sentence, <clears throat> so it's already looking good. And then I'm going to put two. The writer uses a simile with small, swell, like a plump seal to emphasize 
I try to avoid the word show, but emphasize, imply, connote, accentuate. So the right uses simile with a small, uh, like a plump seal, to emphasize, and then I need to say why. And this is the part where I'm going to get marks. So to emphasize the, um, let's put vulnerability, vulnerability, um, I might even double that up, and what's another word for vulnerability? Vulnerability and fragility of the boy. Lovely. So we've clearly explained that, so I'm going to get into clear for this. But I want to extend it, and I want to go deeper. So that's where we're going to use one of my favorite words. Also, other teachers will use, say the word furthermore, just as good. But we just need to indicate that we're going to expand. So we can double up our marks here. So the vulnerability and fragility of the boy. Now, what can I say also? Now, I could mention, because of my annotations, the sibilance. So I might bring that in. Also, the use of sibilance here creates a, let's put hushed tone. Now I need to say why that happens. Why does it create a hushed tone? It creates a hushed tone to um, accentuate the tension of this attack because we've got a shark attack coming and I know that because I've read the full insert. So the writer uses a simile with a small swell like a plump seal to emphasize the vulnerability and fragility of the boy. Also the use of sibilance here creates a hushed tone to accentuate the tension of this attack. Lovely. Now I could go into a third layer if I wanted to if I can think of something. If I can't think of something, fine, move on to the next paragraph. But if I can, I could add it. So I might even put, um, let's see, I haven't mentioned this plump thing yet, have I? So I could bring this in, or I haven't mentioned the seal. You know, So what do I wanna go with, plump or seal? Um, let's go with um, seal, for example. So I'm gonna put the, uh, the phrase, Plump seal. Um, let's put could. I'm going to use speculative language. I don't know, so I'm going to put could. Could. Um, let's put dehumanize. Oh, no. Let's put almost dehumanize. Because he's not dehumanized, but we've got a simile. Dehumanize the boy through animalistic language. Um, why? Uh, again, to um, portray him as a victim. Now I'm really glad I added that last sentence in because I'm going up the mark scheme again because I've come up with another layer of meaning and that's what we're really looking for here. So I've got that first paragraph and I'm really happy with that first paragraph. So now I'm gonna move on to the second section. So I'm going back to my extract and I'm going with darkness lurked. And again, I've got lots of things I can say about that. So one, two, three layers of meaning. Now don't worry if you've got a quotation and you've only got one or two, that's fine. But I'm gonna start with exactly the same sentence opener. So don't think, oh no, I need to change what I'm writing every single time. Of course you don't. The writer uses, and what, I'm, and what am I gonna put here? Short sentence, mm, I put, now again, if I can't think of um, a language device, I always put imagery of, because imagery of is always something that you can mention. So I'm gonna put, the writer uses the imagery of evil with darkness lurked. Lurked to emphasize. And notice I'm using the exact same words as my first paragraph. That's fine, because that's not what we're interested in. We're interested in the inference. So why? So why does he use this imagery of, of evil? Uh, to emphasize the sinister 
nature of the attack. Brilliant. And again, this is where a lot of students finish and say, I'm done. But really, we need to extend, we need to expand, we need to explore. So what else can I put? I'm going to put also um, the use of the short sentence here could, um, what can I put? Could something the tension could um, I'm thinking about this way too much. Accentuate, accentuate the tension built here. Built here. So again, got two layers of meaning. Am I going to go three for three? Yes, I am. So what else can I talk about? Lurked. So I'm going to also mention that. So I'm going to put furthermore. So furthermore the um, now that's actually personification isn't it because darkness can't lurk so I'm going to put the personification lurked um, could what I'm going to say could uh, portray the darkness, the darkness itself, and again, I'm going to look and notice that I'm using the word almost again because I'm speculating, and that's where I'm going right to the top of that mark scheme. Almost like a predator portrays the darkness itself, almost like a predator. Um, once again victimizing the boy so I'm happy with that so I've got two paragraphs now look so I've got my first one here I've got my second one here now in terms of real time obviously I'm going a bit slower because we're going through the thought process we're into 17 minutes but really probably seven or eight minutes so this is where I decide okay do I have enough time to do a third now if I think I have enough time which I think I do then I'll go back to my extract. I've got the water was calm and whispering. I've got the personification warning him. So I'm going to go for that. So I'm going to do the exact same thing again. So last paragraph. The writer uses personification. Again, I want to go over it one more time. I'm not saying the writer uses language. I'm saying the device the writer uses. And I'm going to put with to. So with the water was calm and whispering. Now there should be no excuse for spelling these words right because they're in the extract. So I might want to double check to emphasize. And what does it emphasize? Um, to emphasize, now I might do um, the emphasize the contrast between the, I was going to put calm, but look, I can't because it already says calm there. I don't want to repeat myself. So I might put a different word that means the same thing. Um, let's put serene. To, to contrast between the serene um, opening and the later attack. Now, I know this isn't a structure question, but I am mentioning it as a um, language device because we've got a contrast. Now I do need to make sure I'm focusing on language so I'm going to put also um, the um, whispering of the water and again I'm going to put could could be um, interpreted as even hmm, even nature trying to warn the boy of what is to come. 
Now again, if I can think of a third thing, I might put that in, but I'm not gonna do it for the sake of it. Okay, it's not that, it's not simply, I've got three layers of meaning, so I'm going to get a grade nine. It's, is the quality, have you, is it, is it thoughtful? Have you really considered it? So, but I'm happy with that. So in my 10 minutes, I'm looking at about three or four minutes per paragraph, therefore. I've got my three killer quotations that have been judiciously chosen. I've annotated them with inferences and language devices, so I've planned out what I'm going to put. I've then written, the writer uses a something with quotation to emphasize, and I've gone into two layers, maybe even three layers of meaning, and I've repeated the same steps for paragraphs two and three. But once again, you might just write two paragraphs, so long as they're detailed, and so long as there's clear, clear inferences. So that is a walkthrough of paper one, question two, and B, uh, please go and have a look at the other walkthroughs for the other questions or any other materials on the, uh, on the channel, and don't forget to subscribe.